Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today I'll be talking to you all about the Roman sub Submarillus Padded Armor. Now, um, this actually came to me in a comment, and they wanted to know a historical review on it. Now, I myself have technically looked at this stuff before, and technically it's not Roman. It's originally Greek. Why Greek? Well, we can actually take a look at historical pictures or images that we find on pot clay pots and such. Now, it is stated though this armor actually first came from the culture of the fall of the, uh, well, uh, the Mycenaean culture. Now, we do actually technically state the following historical information that when the Mycenaean culture fell, this type of equipment came around. However, it's also stated that it might have also been used in this culture. We don't really know much of the facts before or after this event, but we do know that it came out sometime during the Bronze Age. Now, if y'all, as y'all can see in the images, I can hear y'all already. So, but this armor looks like shit. Well, technically yes, but in truth, this armor did its job for hundreds of years, from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age and into the Roman Empire's era. Now, how come? Well, that's because of what it was meant for. Now, this type of padded armor was extremely different compared to other padded armors. Why? Well, it's kind of weird, really. It's kind of meaning, re main reason being the historical facts to it, that this evolution for it. Why? Well, let's take a look at the tassels, both for the shoulder and including the leg armor. Now, these tassels, they aren't exactly meant for warfare. They're actually, uh, well, technically they are meant for warfare, but the most best reason that they were mostly meant for was to show off. In other words, they would sometimes be decorated with some weird designs. However, most of the time we don't find any historical, uh, well, discoveries. The only time we do actually find a historical point to it would pretty much cover the historical factor of a, I want to say a poem, but I wouldn't go with that far. But it is stated that Julius Caesar had worn something just like this before his death, especially when he was a conqueror of Rome, or rode into Rome as a conqueror of um, famous battles, such as after defeating Hercingetorix, or including when we see Philip of Macedon, or Alexander the Great, or... you get my point. Now, it's stated that this type of tassels would actually be decorated with a beautiful type of trim. In other words, uh, brass, something, maybe metal, sometimes even woven, we don't really know. But the thing is, it's only technically stated in the following uh, information of dictionaries about it, or including historical facts and finds uh, in which parchment papers, stating the following, that the armor was decorated with such br beautiful bliss, and as which even the golden heavens would shine upon it. Now, that doesn't give us much information of what it was. But for an average foot soldier, it would probably just be a regular color. So, yeah, probably only a Roman legionnaire would... It's kind of like, if I was a Roman general, I would be having that underneath my armor with decorated piece overall. Now, it is stated, though, sometimes they would have put made him out of leather, but I think a very high captain would have probably had to have that made, not a foot soldier. Now, how did it evolve? What were the tassels meant for? Well, as I said, decoration. But as well, what were they meant for defense? Well, that's the thing. There was hardly any. Due to its design, it was only meant to stop cutting blows. If someone was to do a thrust, it would go right through. Now, original design meant for it was actually to take two layers of tassels. Why two layers? Well, they would overlap each other. This overlapping design would technically look like something like I would uh, want to explain like uh, laminar or scale armor. Kind of like that. In doing so, it folds over it. In other words, it makes it easy, very hard to actually, well, cut into the somebody, especially with that double layer. But as well, it's light enough to be used. Now, though, that's the thing. This armor wasn't meant technically for taking a thrust. But if you got cut with it, you'll be fine. Now, that's the thing, though. This type of, well, design, it's not meant... In fact, the rest of the padded armor wasn't meant to uh, be used for battle alone. Now, I hear you already. Temper, what do you mean by that? Well, it's kind of like this. Um, 
in the medieval history, a well, crusaders uh, like the like the crusaders or such, or English or French during the Hundred Years' War. You get my point. Uh, they would have actually worn peasants would have worn gambesons alone, peasant soldiers, serfs, and such. But if you were to wear this armor, not so much. This armor is actually technically used for only one thing: to technically, uh, well, make it a lot easier to wear your plate armor. In other words, your plate armor is, well, pinching everywhere, and you need to wear this gambeson. So, yeah, you see where this is going to go. So, and I hear you already, but simpler. That means it was a crappy armor. Well, not exactly. In fact, the rest of the padding armor was good. But the tassels as well were also good. But the thing is, you can't just wear it alone. you got to wear it with other forms of armor. Otherwise, you're just technically a sitting duck. Now, it is stated, though, that in historical manuals and historical scripts, it is stated that while wearing this armor, you can actually easily just feel as though you're invulnerable. Now, also, though, this is also another reason behind the tassel design. Now, why was it created like this? Well, for one big easy reason. Freedom of movement. In other words, I can easily move. If I, if, For example, if I was wearing it, I would easily be able to move around left and right, move my arm up, up and down, without any restriction to my arm, which made it perfect. Same thing goes for the legs, and that's why the Romans copied it. Why? Well, for their cavalry and for their infantry. In fact, it's actually stated the Greeks, uh, when they went into Italy and such, blah, 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 the Romans copied off of the Greeks. Same as the Etruscans did, and so on. Now, though, this type of armor was only technically used in Greece and the Greek Empire that Alexander created, and including the other later on Greek uh, kingdoms that came after Alexander the Great's empire. But as well, the Romans and Etruscans were only the farthest west they would have gone. Or, unless you actually also count the Carthaginians, who slightly used it. However, this armor wasn't meant to last. Why? Well, because it kind of felt a little stupid. In fact, Roman legionnaires were actually stated to have actually uh, removed their tassels and removed from both their shoulders and including their legs. In other words, for their mail. So, why? Well, that's the thing. Most of the time, the only people that really used it the old-fashioned way were officers. And officers wanted to show off. Officers were stated to have uh, golden bling on their, uh, well, tassels. Now, it didn't technically say bling, but you get the point. But it's stated that they would have been decorated with gold, silver, or something. And in doing so, this actually goes up all the way into the late Roman Empire, and including even the Byzantine Empire, says it. Now, how good was it, though, uh, to go up against alone? Well, here's the thing. If I was a foot soldier, and uh, having just a padded armor, I would be shunned by my peers. I would be an outcast. I may feel light, but in the process, that's the problem. It's light armor, and it was so light that you can actually get a little too carried away and killed easily. In fact, it was actually stated that a Persian arrow can easily penetrate deeply through this armor. Now, it did the armor, this type of armor was meant for what it was supposed to do at the time. In other words, be a light padding type gear. In fact, you could wear your gear with it, you could wear your armor with it, whether it be plate or if it be a lionel thorax. You get my point. This armor was meant to do its job. So, why was it such a crappy design? Well, the thing is, is because weapons evolved, but this armor didn't. It's kind of seen. In fact, they could have actually added extra padding to it, but they didn't most of the time. Most of the time, they kept it so thin light that it was technically just a couple of shirts thick. Yeah, that doesn't sound good at all, does it? But still, guys, this is a really good armor. And as well as you all can actually buy some yourself, I will leave links down for you all in the description below. But as well, guys, as I say this to you all, this is actually really good armor. There's nothing wrong with it, but as, may, as long as it's in this historical part in history, of which it did cover from the time of the Bronze Age or the time of Sparta and Athens to technically the fall of the Byzantine Empire. In fact, it was stated that the armor was then switched from uh, regular cotton to sometimes leather, depending if you were a high-up noble or not. 
But the thing is, after the Byzantine Empire fell, that's the last we see of that type of armor. Though, the thing is, this type of gear was still a very good armor. And the thing is, it lasted a very long time in history, from the fall, pretty much from the uh, beginnings of Sparta and Athens, to pretty much the fall of the Byzantine Empire. That is a huge distance. It technically goes from the Bronze Age all the way up leading to, well, up into the Renaissance, and that's a huge area. So, why is it that we don't remember this type of armor? Well, that's because of the fact people don't remember uh, armor. They normally take a look at swords and they think, oh, this can cut through anything until they find out it doesn't. But still, this armor was meant to do its job at the time. However, it was still not the best I would want to go with in battlefield strategies. And some people kind of might agree with me with that. However, if it was in the Greek for phalanx formation, then yes, it can work. But still, guys, this has been Templar. Hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below. If you want me to cover anything else in history, let me also know that in the comments below. Also, like and subscribe. Also, click that bell button for notifications. And as well, also check out our Facebook page, of which y'all can actually check out. That way, I will hopefully see y'all there. And as well, you guys can actually see more content of my videos. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Hopefully you found this helpful. And have a great day.